Now we want to add tests for these methods so that we can have blog posts uh, that we can check to see are you draft, does draft correctly rent, uh, return true or false for that. So we're going to go into our test directory here and there's going to be a models folder in there and Rails, since we generated a model with the generator, is already going to have a blog post test that we can use. Um, so this is filled out. It looks just like this. You require a test helper. Uh, you define a class that is the same as your model name, but you add the word test at the end and you inherit from active support test case instead. And this uh, will include some methods that you can use like test to define a test that does something. So we can say uh, test draft returns true for draft blog post. So we can make a new blog post in memory with the published at as the nil value. And we want to ask that blog post if it is draft. And in order to test and see if this returns true or false, we could drop in a binding.reb to actually do some debugging. And we can say rails test test models blog post test.rb. So this is going to load up that file and then run our test. And it's gonna give us an error because our fixtures are invalid. And that is a test feature called fixtures users YAML. It generates these two empty um, test fixtures. One of those is causing a problem because both of them have invalid emails. These are basically like our seeds uh, in our test environment, we can use fixtures to pre-populate the database with some example data. And we're just gonna comment that out because these users are invalid. And it's generated a couple example blog posts for us, which we can use for our tests as well. But we're going to run this after we commented those out, get back to finishing this blog uh, draft test. So binding IRB opens up a IRB console that you can interact with your code at any point where you run that binding IRB line of code. So here we can run anything we want. We can say, um, I meant to copy this. We can copy paste that line, blog post new, create a new blog post in memory with the published at it's nil, and then ask it, is, is it a draft post? It says true, which is good. That's what we want. So in order for our test, to actually um, verify that that is correct. We wanna to go to our test and we wanna add the assert here at the beginning of this uh, new blog post question. What assert does is it looks at the value that the next snippet of code returns. So this is going to evaluate and return the word true and assert wants to make sure that it was returning true. If it returns anything that is not true, it is going to raise an exception. So if we were to go into our, our draft and we just got rid of this and we said, oh, it's going to return false, then our blog post test is going to say, expected false to be truthy. And it says that that test failed and there's the test on line four and specifically line five of that test file was the one that raised that um, failure. So if we look at line five, that is our assertion. It said that this returned false, and it did because we just changed that code. And if we put this back and rerun our tests, we should have all greens, and we do, perfect. So we can write another test that says draft returns false for a published blog post. And if we left this alone, this is going to also raise an error because that post has a nil or it should raise an error. We want this to instead, uh, we want it to return false. So our assert needs to be changed to refute. And this is the opposite of assert where it expects whatever code is over here to return false instead. And if we run this now, we should have a failing test and we do. It expects true not to be truthy, so it expects it to be false. And that is because we need to make our published at uh, match the example description we had. So we want draft to return false for a published blog post. And this could be something a year ago, a month ago, whatever it is, a blog post that was published in the past. 
and not a scheduled post. So there we go. That test is now passing. And we can make another one of these for a scheduled blog post to be uh, thorough here. And we can say from now. And this should refute. And we can just run this test and it should pass uh, because this is basically the same thing as the previous one. Uh, however, it's just checking is it in the past or is it in the future? Either way, either case, uh, it is going to return or should return false if the published at is set to anything. So then we can go write uh, our published returns false for draft blog post. We can then write published returns true for published blog post. And similar to this one, we'll fix that capital letter there. For a scheduled blog post, this should return false. And I'm probably gonna put, put this true at the beginning because that's the you know most common case we want to test there. So very similar to these up above, we're going to assert that a blog post with a published at one year ago is considered published. And for this one, we want to refute that a blog post that is draft, which would be nil, uh, is not published. And then for this one, we want to make sure that a scheduled post one year from now is not considered published. So ideally you would be going through and writing all these examples out and watching the test fail and making sure that your logic that you implemented uh, correctly passes all of that. But um, we know conceptually that we wrote this code and it does make sense and it works right. So we can write tests like this quickly to go fill that back in and just verify that yes, what we wrote does make sense and it's pretty quick to make these tests and we don't have to worry too much about doing them wrong. But as your code gets more complicated, you will often want to adjust that. So this one, we wanna say is published, and then this first one we will say it's true for a scheduled blog post. And we wanna change each of these to scheduled. And that should work. So we have this one, uh, we wanna make sure that that is a scheduled from now. We want to have this line 37 from now to be a go. So that represents a published blog post there. And uh, we can go and run our tests again, and it's going to have nine runs. Each one of those has an assertion. All of them succeeded. Zero failures, zero errors, and zero tests skipped. Now, I wanna point out that we are doing some repetitive stuff here. We're generating a blog post with nil uh, three times. We're also generating one with year, one year ago, three different times, uh, and actually, yeah, one, two, three. Um, and this is just a regular old Ruby class with some extra features like the test function here. Um, but we can go and write our own helper methods in here if we would like. So we could say, uh, we wanna grab a blog post that was um, a draft. So we could say draft blog post, and this could return a new blog post in memory. And we could just change our code here to draft blog post to reference that method get the return value, which is the new blog post, and then use this little shortcut. So then we don't have to reference that nil value every single time. We have one place where we defined it, and we can use that across our tests. Now, this is the exact same purpose of fixtures. So in our blog post fixtures.yaml file, we have two example ones that Rails generated for us. It doesn't know our code or what we're doing or anything. So it just says, here's one, here's two. Uh, they're both random titles, random bodies. We know they're string and text columns. So here's some examples. But what we could do is we could say, here's a draft blog post, here's a published blog post, and let's make a scheduled blog post. And this one, we'll just give it a name, a scheduled post. This one can be published 
post. And this one can be draft post. And we'll add our published at in here, which is going to be nil. Um, or no, I can't remember. No, I think is what we want for YAML. Um, then published at, we can use ERB inside of here and we can say time.current. And, or this is probably, we'll do the same thing, one year ago. So it's always way in the past. And then down here, we'll do the same for this one year from now. So our test uh, ideally uses these brand new blog posts in memory. But to show you that we can do a very similar thing to this using our fixtures, we can use the fixture helper method, blog posts, plural. And this is a function that our fixtures give us. They take the fixture files um, and then give you a method with the same name. So blog posts matches like our blog posts.yaml. And then we can use the symbol in here and say, I want my draft blog post. And this will query that and find it out of the database um, matching the name of your example record in your fixtures. We'll find it out of the database and then ask it if it is a draft. So it's a little slower, just a hair, because it's going to query the database for that fixture. But it also is really handy because we can use this for other tests in our code as well. Plus, this will have all of the extra fields filled out. When we wrote these tests, we only filled out the published at field. So these records aren't actually valid. Um, they wouldn't have the extra information in there. We don't need that for these tests because the only thing we care about is the published at field, but it can be nice to go through and use our fixtures in a lot of places so that it's consistent. So draft uh, blog posts, which we have referenced here and here can be replaced in all of those cases. So we gotta make sure we get that uh, parentheses at the end. So we'll do that up here. And then we will grab the, <clears throat> the published blog post, blog, oops, blog posts published. And I'll copy that and we will go to published lines and replace that. So we've got that here on line 37. Voila, and then for these last three that we need to do, we can replace these with blog posts scheduled. I'll copy that and replace these. So I think I can D, D T, uh, open parentheses, there we go, and use my Vim shortcuts. D, T, close parentheses, there we go. So now our tests are using fixtures and it just relies on this to be filled out proper, properly in our test fixtures blog post YAML file. And if we rerun our tests, these should all pass exactly like they did before. So these actually ran in about the same amount of time as previously. So uh, three, or well, you can see 0 0.029 or 0 0.03 seconds. Um, and this is 0 0.33 seconds. So it's almost the same amount of time. It will be slightly slower because we are querying the database and that takes a millisecond or two for each of those records. But it's only nine tests, nine queries to our database, and that's not bad. Uh, as your test suite gets bigger and bigger, you're gonna really care about these tests and their performance because you don't want them to run for an hour, but uh, you do wanna make sure you have tests so that your logic that you define, like we tested all of these very thoroughly, we can now ensure that as long as our, we run our test suite regularly, that if any of these fail, we can go and fix it and make sure that we didn't break these uh, methods that we just wrote. So that is uh, an example of writing tests in your Rails um, test suite for models. So let's go and commit this code. We'll get add dash P and we will get commit add tests for blog post uh, published helpers or methods. We'll get push this and then let's deploy this to render. 